welcome back. We're sitting in the newly renovated Fergus Library in the adult fiction section, because what better spot to chat with an author than here in the library? And I'm chatting today with Lisa Dalrymple. She is a children's book author, so we should be in the children's section, but <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> they let me come upstairs. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Lisa has had an awesome life. She has lived with chickens in South Korea. She's lived with cats in Scotland, and <laughs> lizards in Thailand, her two sisters in England, and we are now very fortunate that she lives here in Fergus with her husband and three children. So welcome, Lisa. Thanks, Roxanne. She's written several children's books and is also the winner of the Crystal Kite Award. So can you tell us a bit about your books? Oh, I don't know where to start, <laughs> <laughs> Which one's your favorite? <laughs> oh, now that's like asking me to pick a favorite child. And it depends which one set the table most recently. <laughs> yeah, so, that's right. <laughs> um, I, like, I like all of them for very different reasons. Um, uh, if It's No Trouble, A Big Polar Bear was my first book, so right. that will always have a special place in my heart um, because it was the first one that was published, but then right on its heels mm -hmm. was Skink on the Brink, um, which is a, a beautiful book uh, illustrated by Suzanne Del Rizzo in plasticine, and so that one is yes. very unique in mm -hmm. itself as well. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it is it is difficult, and, and then of course the there's the newest book, and so you know a moose goes a murmuring, illustrated by Dave Sturge. So um, yeah, they all have a special place. And the skink is the one you won the award for. That's right, skink, skink on the brink. Skink on the brink won uh, SCBWI's um, Crystal Kite Award for Canada in uh, 2014. So, yes. Very exciting. Thank you. So can you tell us a bit about your writing process? Do you write in a particular spot, a particular time? I write wherever my children are not. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been interesting. They're getting a bit older now, right. so, um, so there's a little more space and time there for me. But uh, <laughs> for the most part, it's been, you know, grabbing whatever moments of the day are free and scribbling down a few words or <laughs> in, your, in the case of a rhyming book, perhaps a verse or two, um, right. and then coming back to it later when when there's another moment <laughs> of peace. So. so it is, you need peace to write. I do, I do, I know. I, I, you know, you hear about you know, writers writing in coffee shops mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and finding quiet places around town. I can't do that at right. all. I very much have to be in a, in a box and, oh, right. uh, and in, my own, in my own world, yeah. And do you have a special place, a room that, that you like best? Um, it seems to have become the attic. We have oh. the, the attic, which sounds awful, I know. It does. Yeah, but it is a finished attic. Um, we have, we have, you know, they extended the house up to that third floor, and that tends to be where my children find me least. Uh, um, right. Yeah, but, uh, but when they're at school, you know, there's a nice little reading nook off the kitchen, and I like to be there, too. It's nice and bright and sunny and, mm -hmm. and quiet, so. Oh, um, very yeah. nice. I have a portable desk that goes everywhere with oh, me. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's a shelf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but you call it your desk. I call it my desk, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and would be finding peace and time to write, the big, would that be the biggest challenge or, or what would you think your biggest challenge is? I would have said that that was my biggest challenge, mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, now that, as I said, the kids are getting older and I have more peace and time and I'm realizing a lot of the other demands that um, tend to weigh on writers, whether they have kids or not. You know, right. some days the, the motivation's just not there, or the inspiration's just not there, or mm -hmm. or they're both there, but the words just still aren't coming out the way you want them to. So, right, yeah. right. Yeah. And I've heard of writers who, even when they feel like it's not working, they, they, they sit down and just write. Yeah. Do you do that, or do you feel better taking a break and going to do something else? I I, I try to make myself go and take a break because I'm aware that if it's mm -hmm. not working, I'm not going to be able to make it work. I'm right. really not. But I'm not very good at walking away from something oh, until right. it's done. <laughs> so I'm a bit of a martyr that way, and I will sit and just hammer away at the same old sentences, making them no better until I fall down from exhaustion or the kids come home. Right, so, and, yeah. and tear you away. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And one of the things I found interesting after talking with you was I hadn't realized that children's book authors don't get to choose their illustrator. Uh -huh. But you've been really fortunate. But is there an illustrator that you would love to work with? Someone oh you goodness. dream of? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, or if there isn't? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I would not want to pick just one. Right, um, right. I think that <laughs> <laughs> I've been very, very lucky with the illustrators that I have worked with. Mm -hmm. um, 
there has been a lot of times with, uh, as, as you were saying, with a, a children's picture book, it's the publisher who selects the illustrator, mm -hmm. and sometimes the author and illustrator don't even um, get to discuss oh, the... Wow. So the author doesn't get a lot of input. Right. But the way it's worked with each of my books, uh, the books that are with Tucker Moore in uh, Newfoundland, uh, Tucker Moore Books, um, they have put me in touch with the illustrator every time to kind of oh, say, you know, nice. what are you envisioning for this page, mm -hmm. which is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, and then with Skink on the Brink, uh, Christy Harkin, the editor on this book, was so um, focused and intent, and I love her for this, on making sure that the everything in the book was biologically accurate. And so right. given that I had been the one who'd done all the research, um, although Suzanne did an awful lot herself, mm -hmm. Uh, she contacted me a lot to make sure that she was getting things just right, and right. I was able to say, you know, yeah, this would work, or no, this, mm -hmm. you know, a moose wouldn't be in this habitat, right. so <laughs> we quickly swapped it out for a white-tailed deer, um, things like that. Right. So, yeah, right. I've, oh, I've had a fair amount of input. I've been lucky that way. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And do you ever think you would write, um, or for adults or teens, or do you love the the children's? Absolutely. I mean, I started writing for my own age right. range, right? Because mm -hmm. I've, I've been writing since I was seven or eight years old. Oh, wow. um, and then I think it was when the kids came along and A, I was very focused on kids' books because I was reading to them mm -hmm. and B, I had very limited time and so right. writing a, a, a snippet of a kids' book, at least there was a, <laughs> <laughs> there was a light at the end of the yes. tunnel. Yeah, that's um, right. <laughs> at the end of the day, so I, <laughs> You know, I don't want to say I wandered into this. It's, mm -hmm. It was, you know, a hard slog. It took me years of submitting before I got published mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. hundreds of rejections. Mm -hmm. But we won't go there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, but I mean, I do still write for adults. Right. Um, I, I have a little bit published under a pen name. Um, and so. <laughs> oh, but you keep it secret? I do, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I don't know that I will. I think that right. what I'm doing now, should it get published, I would like to do that under my own name. Right. So, yeah. Oh, very yeah. interesting. Something and I'm currently writing research. for older kids, too. Oh, okay. I'm hoping that, that maybe in the next couple of years we might see some novels for older, mm -hmm. older students coming Oh, out. that's yeah. exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and what are you working on now? Um, well, one of them is. <laughs> yeah, beyond, besides that. <laughs> Since you happen to mention it. Yeah. Um, I do have a novel that I'm working on for um, like the middle grade range. Um, so uh, say 10 to, 10 to 13 age. Right. Um, that I'm very excited about. Uh, I also have work that I've been doing, nonfiction work, for an educational publisher. Mm -hmm. And so there'll be a couple of those books coming out in the next little while as well. And there's a there's another picture book that's very near and dear to my heart that uh, that I think might be just about ready for submission. Oh. So that oh, would be fun so too. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah. yeah. And ha do you have an agent? How do you decide where you're going to submit it to? I don't have an agent. Um, uh, agents for picture books in Canada, it's it's a very tricky sort oh, of market, okay. um, and there's not a lot of money in it. So <laughs> like, maybe maybe they just don't want to touch us. Um, so I have uh, I know which companies, or I try to keep abreast of which companies are looking for the kind of writing that I'm doing, and so right. I'm submitting targeted to the editors that are particular houses that happen to be, you know, looking for okay. a rhyming picture book, mm -hmm. or a, a educational informational picture book, or a middle grade novel, um, so that's mm -hmm. that's kind of how I approach things. Yeah. And that's kind of interesting, because there's so much more to, to being an author than just the writing. There's keeping on track of, of who's looking for what sort of book, and yeah. and what other authors are doing, and... Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I say that I need a, like, I almost feel like I need a full office staff. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> one to be handling the submissions, one to be going to the conferences and, and, you know, doing the networking, and then one to actually be writing. Yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and then to be marketing the books after they come out as well, because a lot of that falls to the author too, as you know. So, yeah, it's, uh, I need, I need to clone myself. <laughs> <laughs> a few times. Yeah. <laughs> so if somebody asked you about being an author, like say one of your children wanted to be an author, would would you have any advice for them or stay that, away? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that it is something you definitely have to love, right? right. It's something mm -hmm. that you do because you can't not do right. it. It's, it's uh, yeah, because mm -hmm. it's certainly, at least in my case, not um, a, a career, not making a living, as we were talking about before right. we started taping. Mm -hmm. It's not something that I make a living out of, but it is something that I consider my life's, mm -hmm. my life's direction, my right. life's goal. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But I have yeah. to love it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Especially after all those, what did I say, 200 rejections? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> does wear on you. <laughs> Some days. What, what do you like to do when you're not writing? When I'm not writing, um, I like being outside. I like, mm. you know, going for walks, hanging out with the kids, bike riding. Right. We do a lot of camping, canoeing, um, <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> so we, we really like being outside. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. That was great catching up with you. And stay with us. We'll be back momentarily turning more pages and talking about books.